Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco, continuing on my pandemic projects. Today I've selected a Mitchell uh, because one of our viewers out there is having a problem resetting the uh, spring uh, internally and uh, wanted to share how to do that with him. But in addition to that, I'll show you how to take apart, clean, and reassemble a uh, Mitchell, Garcia Mitchell. Uh, from the 1970s. Very popular reel at the time. They're, uh, they're yellow sided reels so they're easily identifiable. They come in two uh, frame sizes. They come in a narrow diameter frame. This is the 602, 602A maybe. They always lose their tags it seems on most of these. Uh, this is one I'm going to work on. It's a 622 even though I'm missing a piece of the tag there. And uh, here's a 624 which is basically the same reel only a little bit bigger. Um, th this is almost like the Pen 60 and the Pen 65 if you were going to look at it and this would be close to the Pen uh, 155 Beachmaster or the Squitter uh, with kind of a setup with the frame uh, likeness. They had, uh, they were known for their coffee grinder handle. That's because that was a handle that you would find on a coffee grinder back in the hardware stores, or grocery stores of the day. And they did come in two types of handle. Uh, one was a bullet handle and the other was the, uh, the coffee grinder handle. And almost all of these reels, for whatever reason, have a weak spot right on this burring here uh, where you have spider cracks. It's very hard to uh, find one that does not. Uh, and then uh, in this case, this reel's missing the coffee grinder uh, handle knob attachment, but you can see the spider cracks on this one as well. Just seems to be the, uh, the weak point of that side plate. I do have a replacement handle at one point. I will do this reel and put that handle on, but I just wanted to show you the differences because when you go to do this reel, the technology inside the reel from a setup standpoint is pretty much the same. So if you do one of these, you can do uh, the others. Also, uh, these reels came with another flavor without the side plate, so you'll see a yellow side plate without the trim ring, and uh, those were, um, uh, for example, a 600 versus a 602, I think, and there's a couple of different varieties, but what you, you can always identify these reels by this cream yellow colored uh, side plate. Uh, heavy, heavy chrome on these. Uh, beautiful chrome. You won't find that on any reels today. Uh, but that should all clean up as, uh, as we do the servicing here. Okay, so let's start by taking off the external pieces. While we're doing that, a couple of things. You'll notice I have a protective glove on my hand. Uh, those gloves are to uh, keep the junk off of my hands, but I guess they're also good for pandemics and uh, keeping that coronavirus away, and uh, so be it. I do not have the wrench for this. Uh, I don't, uh, don't recall ever coming across that wrench in the things that I've purchased, but what I do use very gingerly is a little channel lock pliers. I just grab the ridges with the ridge of the bottom of this uh, jaw, and I just do enough of it that I get that thing turning, just like that, and I get rid of those pliers. I don't want to scrape up or uh, do anything unusual to uh, mar the finishes if I can. I wish I had that uh, that wrench, but I don't. Okay, you'll notice I'm putting all of my pieces into a parts tray. That parts tray is simply the bottom of a milk jug and it keeps everything where I need to know it. This is a case of where a reel is sat for a while. You can notice the, the accumulated grease and junk. Uh, I call it shellacking. It's probably the oil that is just uh, over time. You have to scrub that off. It just turned to goo. That's probably what I expect to find inside this reel here. Okay, I'm going to take the star adjuster off. And we'll do some cleaning along the way. I'm not going to clean everything on camera if I find that, uh, um, that the stuff needs some work. But I have 4.0 steel wool, which is the finest steel wool. Uh, and then chrome polish, which is an automotive product. And that helps me to dissolve the... Uh, the junk on the, the chrome. Give it a little bit of polish while we're at it. And this is truly chromed pieces here. These are one of the things that I like about this particular reel is no matter what condition you find it in, whether you got it at a flea market or eBay or somewhere else, you can generally shine these things up. There's uh, 
it's that quality where it doesn't fade. It just uh, seems to uh, accumulate junk on the outside of it. And we'll show you that as we uh, as we proceed. So these have uh, finger grips on them. So once you uh, you break the screw, you, again, you can just walk it out with your hands. Most of the time, these screws tend to get caught in the side plate. You don't have to take them all the way out. They will come all the way out, but uh, you don't have to. I probably will because I'm going to work on the side plate here. There you go. I'll just pull them out if we can. One more, I'll take the side plate off. These reels were uh, built like tanks, to uh, use everybody's favorite uh, comparisons of late. Very strong reels. Uh, the design is still used today. I've had this the design on these uh, inside of a, uh, a Bass Pro Shop uh, Trophy Angler reel. And uh, this other fellow that uh, I'm actually going to show how to set this uh, free spool uh, release mechanism back up. That's where they're stuck. But uh, I've seen this on a, I think it's called a C-Strike reel, which is what he has. But regardless, the technology is pretty same, pretty simple. You look at that and you say, how can that land big fish? But uh, it does, and it's uh, very effective. Big gear drives small gear. Uh, spring under here, and um, pretty uh, pretty simple in design. And the beauty of that is it's kind of hard to break them if you keep the uh, moving pieces and parts to a minimum. You saw that I removed the trim ring. That's because the hold down for that free spool mechanism is in the case and you need to take that trim ring off in order to do that. And right now we're just going to take the main bridge off Then we'll remove this. We'll do a nice cleaning. Uh, this chrome, as I mentioned, will clean up. I'll just give you an example of it now because I'm probably going to turn off the, the video just because uh, you don't need to see me do the laundry, so to speak. Uh, but here's just an example of how much more that will shine with just a little bit of polish. It's like an old uh, chrome bumper on the 70s car. It, uh, it was just uh, overdone. So I'm just gonna put these pieces in there for now. We'll take the bridge off. I'll, I'll lay out the pieces for you. I'll go do the laundry and then we'll come back. So here's the uh, four screws that hold the bridge in. One of these has a dog on it and the dog spring. So you wanna be careful as you're taking this bridge off I think that may have been what happened to the fella here with his uh, C-Strike wheel. I think he was probably working on this side, not realizing what was going to pop off the back side. And uh, when that happened, it was, uh, can you help me? And I'm kind of glad to pitch in and try and help. I'm laying these screws on the, on the table here just to make sure that they're all the same. There's, they are in length and look. They're different than the pen screws and that the pen screws have fully threaded on some. These are all the same. And what I do here is I hold that bridge tight and then I cut my hand because I know there's pieces that are going to come out. I've uh, shared this tip before, but a viewer did send in, said if you are nervous about the pieces flying, put the side plate inside of a plastic bag before you remove the bridge. And that way, if any pieces and parts do spring and shoot out, they're at least captured uh, in that, I think that's a great idea, which is why I'm passing that along. Okay, I've got it cupped. I'm going to push the bridge assembly through if I can. And I'm a little bit hung up here on something. I guess the free spool trip. Here's that dog and spring that you want to make sure doesn't, uh, doesn't jump out at you. So I'm going to just uh, be very careful here. There we go. We got it through. But uh, again, you don't want to lose that spring, especially when you're working on a reel like this. Parts become uh, a little bit more difficult to find and uh, more expensive as well, uh, so you have to replace them. I was fortunate in that the spring remained in that little uh, cut there, but I'm not going to press my luck. I'm going to grab a little pick, hold that spring with my finger, and then just gently remove that and put that into my parts tray. Don't want to lose that one. So on the free spool release, you can take that off. There's a little nut here that if you want to, you can. Generally, if you flip this out of the way with that side plate off, you can work this out by twisting sideways like that. And then there should be a spring in the cavity, which there is. 
and that's what's providing the yoke spring to come up and down uh, as opposed to some of the other setups that, that you may have seen on the yoke. All right, so that's the internal pieces and parts. You don't have to remove the free spool lever. You don't have to remove the spring. So that's the, the gear side plate. Let's take the gear side off then. Here's your dog. That's the dog. That goes on that little metal post here that you can see. It just rides like that and the spring's going to ride in that cavity. And we're going to look in here. I think that if I recall the Penn uh, Long Beach uh, HD100 drag washers will fit in this. And that's what I'll check when I'm off camera as well. Because these are leather washers. In this case it actually looks like it's still held together which is wonderful. Uh, you probably could reuse them, but if you're going to spend your time and you're going to put that reel out there, yeah, these are actually pretty good. They're they're flexible. They haven't broken. Uh, looks like like everything else, they've dried to the metal piece, but those can usually be separated. Yeah, these these can actually be reused. Uh, but if you're in if you're in danger of uh, having ones that are weak or can't be reused, and you want to uh, replace, I believe the, the HT100 Pen 60s will work and uh, I'm going to report back to you on that because right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these pieces off and uh, clean them up. And that includes this uh, gear sleeve here. The gear sleeve you can push that pin out of usually. Sometimes you have to tap it out. Let's see if we can get it from this side. There's a little pin just like pen that holds that on the gear sleeve. I'm going to uh, just grab this up, see if I can't tap that through using my pin. I may be off camera for this, but that's steadying the, uh, trying to steady the piece here as I tap it. Nice reels. I don't know. Uh, a lot of fans of this one. I fished with this reel. They've all been uh, top quality players and uh, I've enjoyed fishing with them and I enjoy working on them because of the quality of the manufacture of this. I apologize that that was off, uh, off camera but it just took me a little bit there. You can see how this uh, pin pulls through. I had to tap it in from the other side using a, uh, a pick or an awl. I'm going to use a pliers to gently pull it out the rest of the way. You don't want to get crazy with this because you don't want to scar the pin. You do want to make sure that you can get that pin back in. So I'm just trying to get to the point where the tip of the pin is past the groove. takes a little bit of patience. We're not there yet. Okay, well I pulled the pin out to do that. Okay, well you need to I'm gonna need to work that up. What I'm gonna do is put some penetrating oil in there. I'm going to let that sit for a moment. I'm going to clean up the chrome on these pieces and then we'll come back and uh, we'll work on the rest of the reel. Okay, I'm back having completed the cleaning of all of the pieces and parts in this. Uh, it came out pretty nice. I've uh, reinstalled the trim rings on this side and I've also reinstalled the clicker ring here. Uh, but uh, you want to make sure that as you're cleaning, if you're using an ultrasonic cleaner, uh, things like this, these uh, glued on or, or um, uh, any other kind of adhesive kind of decals and that, if you use those in the electro, uh, ultrasonic cleaner, they have a tendency to peel off. So uh, if you do that, just a word of caution there. But you can see how nicely these have cleaned up. Like I said, it's one of the best reels in my mind in terms of how they clean up. Okay, when we go to reinstall these then, uh, you need to understand that you have two different sets of um, screws and you have two different sets on the side plates themselves. The, the outside trimming here has four holes in it 
the inside trim ring, which has been held off because we're going to go put the case back on there, has six. So when you go to reinstall your, your crossbars and your real seat, the two bottom holes here have crossbars that have studs rather than holes in them. So don't confuse those uh, as you go about doing it. The two sets of screws, you have a long screw and a short screw. The short screw belongs in the real seat, the long screw belongs in the cross post. So we're going to take a long screw, I'm just going to start threading these by hand. I should use my other hand so you can see things better. Now I'm going to put all four of them in without tightening them all off. But I like to find the two that have the studs on it first because if you, if you misinstall those, what's going to happen is you're going to go to put the real uh, side plate on and you're not going to be able to fit them. All right, then we have two more long ones up top here. Now the ones with the flat tapered heads belong on the non-gear side. You remember on the gear side we took them out, they had the bigger head screws with the, um, the finger grips on them. So if you've thrown them all into the parts tray, that's a short one, that doesn't belong there. If you uh, put them into your parts tray and you're concerned or confused about which ones went where, uh, that's how that goes. Okay, and then we just lay that on its side. Once you do that, it's easier to do it that way and then put your, your real seat in. Again, I'll apologize if the uh, camera angle isn't proper here. I'm just lining up the holes here. And just tightening that down. And that's how you, you go ahead and put that body in, but I did want to did want to bring that out. Most uh, most of these yellow series reels, 600 series reels, do have these studs on that side. Okay, so we've confirmed that the uh, drag washers for the pen, the HD100, will fit there if you do need a replacement. I took this uh, bridge sleeve off earlier. We've cleaned up the bridge. Now it's time to go reinstall there. I'm going to use uh, Blue grease, it's pen precision reel grease. Uh, yeah, it's a Mitchell reel. Uh, I've mentioned this quite a few times before that you don't need to uh, use the same manufacturer's grease, but you do need to use fishing reel grease. All right, we're on with that. And then we can just use that same pliers to push that pin in that I used to pull it out. And you do need to make sure that that head clears that little ridge there, otherwise your, your main uh, gear won't go back on. Check the main gear, make sure the teeth are clean. I did that already uh, while we were off camera. Grab some grease and get it into a couple of spots along the way of the main gear. You don't have to put it in all of it. And you can snap that main gear on. And then I'm going to use drag reel, uh, rear, uh, Cal's drag grease for the leather washers that helps keep them flexible and lubricated so I start with just dipping it into the grease you can brush it on if you like I use my gloved hand to, to distribute the grease around there and then I wipe it off with a paper towel so that there isn't a lot of excess riding on it and we're going to do that and then the way that the sequence is on these metal washers is you have a round one with two flat sides that goes next Grab another one of those drag washers. We'll do this again. We'll dip it in. We'll distribute it with the gloved hand. Wipe the excess off. That'll, that grease will also keep them from binding to the washers. The next one is called an eared washer. Kind of looks like a face. Two points on the side, but a totally round inside as opposed to the one with the two flat sides. That goes on next and seats itself into the ridges in the main gear. You'll see it here. There's two ridges that those ears go into. You got to get it into those ridges. If you don't do that, then that gear or that uh, metal washer will not go down all the way and you won't have a drag system. That's the last one where we've just done the same thing. We got the flat sided uh, washer up top again. And then we had this little uh, kind of funky washer with the two points on it which goes on top. Okay, that's your drag stack is done now. 
The net spool clean up nicely. Look at that, it's like a shiny bumper off of a 1965 Ford or something. It's just, it's huge in terms of uh, weight and it's uh, huge in terms of the amount of chrome plating they put on this thing that 40 or 50 years later can still shine. I'm gonna grab the spool, I'm gonna put some uh, blue grease on both sides. I'm gonna insert that into the case. Okay. Now we want to install the, we want to answer the question that was asked that started this whole project. Uh, how do I go about reinstalling this gear side and making sure that my spring assemblies on the right are correct? All right, so although I took care of the main gear, it doesn't look like I paid much attention to the spool gear here. So I'm going to just grab that spool gear, pinion gear. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add some blue grease to the, the front side. That's going to go into the yoke. The yoke has got that fork on it. Put some grease on both sides of that so that that moves smooth, smoothly. And insert the fork into that. The U-shaped groove in the pinion gear is going to face outward when we're going to do this. And actually we can do that right now. We can just find the notch in the case. That's where this is going to go in. Remember what we did when we took this out, we had a spring that was loaded into that little cavity. A little bit of grease into the gear side uh, firing sleeve there. And we kind of rotated it, right? We, we put it on its side and got it under the slot. Just like that. And then we should just press down. Now what I like to do when I do this now, that's in the, uh, the one side. I like to slip it all the way over for the free spool. So that holds this assembly in place while we complete the rest of the work. We have our complete bridge. So right now I'm going to go for my, my anti-reverse dog on the spring, which is conveniently located in my parts tray. And I'm going to do it similar to the way we do the pen going to put the bridge assembly in and you're going to turn it halfway. In this case you don't have a screw for a pen, you have that little post that the dog rides on, so the post is next, or the, the, the dog is next. There's really only one way to put that dog. Now that's the cavity that you would normally see if you're working on a pen, you'd normally see it over on the side, but the cavity is up top. And this is the moment where you take a deep breath and you hope you don't shoot your spring here. So what I do is I like to load it from the bottom, pressing down, kind of using a thumbnail and feeling it with my finger to make sure that I've got it loaded and then pushing it down completely. So that's the way that the spring loads sitting on top of the dog. Once you do that, you can complete the rotation of the bridge. And then we noted before that the bridge screws are all the same. So I'm going to start on the bottom right here just because it's opposite where I'm keeping the pressure on the reel at the moment. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down. Tighten it enough. But that'll hold the bridge while I come over and make sure that I have the, the screw centered for the top on this one. I'll complete that assembly. And once I have the two, we'll come back over to the other side, put the third in. And again, I'm not tightening these down fully because I want to make sure that they seat easily as we're going to complete this. And once I have the four, I have the four now, so I'll tighten this one down and then I'm going to go opposite the way I put them in to begin with. So I'll come back on the other side, kind of northeast, southwest. Tighten this side down. Tighten the last one down. Give the reel a turn. Make sure that I hear that clicking going on. You can actually look underneath there and see the, the dog working at that point. All right, then we want to just take the side plate. Line those up with the holes, press it on. 
and you can come over and line this up. Now you have those two studs here, so you can find the second from the bottom hole, if you will, as you go in. And that's going to hold, help hold it on there. There you go, we're pressed on both sides. Now we can take those finger grip screws, work them in through your case, get them started. And just like we did on the bridge, I'm going to go from one side to the other side, just to keep even tension on this. I'm not going to tighten them down all the way until I get all four of those on. The next two are the real seats and I'm wondering if I just uh, made a mistake here and put the short ones in. In the wrong slot. It's possible I did that. This is the same kind of setup as the, the top side. I believe there's a long and a short. Nope, that's the right side. So at least I got one right. We may have to hunt for which one is the other. Yeah, see how this one comes through here? So one of those two that I put there uh, was shorter. So we're going to back it out and do it right. We'll lay that one down. There's a short one here. It's one of the two top ones that we did. If you leave that one in the way it was, is the culprit. If you leave that one in the way it was, you risk that the line coming off the spool grabs the little uh, piece that's hanging over the real seat there and can snag you or cause backlash. At worst, it can break your line. So you want to make sure that uh, you do it the way it should be done. Okay, so that's that piece. I got a towel. I know my hands have been a little greasy with some of that other stuff I've been doing. I'm going to grab the gear sleeve uh, collar there. Look how nice those pieces cleaned up. Put our star adjuster on. Get our handle going. Oops, I didn't, for some reason I didn't clean that excess off the handle. No problem, we got plenty of polish left on the, uh, the steel wall. And plenty of chrome left on the handle. A beautiful piece. Alright. Like I said, the only part of this whole reel that I don't enjoy is that I don't have that uh, wrench for this handle. So that last quarter of a turn there, you do risk scarring the metal. And uh, just be careful. If you have the handle, you're fortunate. In my case, this is an acceptable alternative. Just be careful. It's a beautiful reel. You really don't want to go scarring up all of the uh, the chrome plating because you got, got aggressive there. All right, is that little winged hold down? Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. In this case, it's just got to back off a little bit. Play with it. You got to line the hole. Prongs have got to sit in those sleeves. The hole has got to line up. It's lined up now. And then this will just complete the work and we'll give it a spin. We'll make sure that it works. So uh, if you have any questions on reel repair, whether it's this particular reel or another reel you're working on where you're stuck, please uh, leave them in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to get back to you. If you have a reel that needs repair and you're a little bit intimidated or you have no desire to even try repairing it but you're looking for a source to repair, I do repair reels by email. If you have that interest, you can uh, send that to me in an email and uh, the email is on my business card at the end. I'll be happy to get back to you and uh, give you the details. Um, I do appreciate you watching. I appreciate you taking the time during this pandemic to uh, uh, leave some comments and keep the conversation going and uh, I hope that all stays well and that uh, we'll all be back out fishing soon enough. Okay, so there you go. We got a beautifully turning spool with heavy chrome. We got a nice cranking reel 
We gotta go check those drags. I'm sure they're working, they're just not adjusted. Okay, nice and tight there. Now, tip, uh, back those drags off. If you're not using a reel, back the drag off. You don't need to press the grease out and have them, uh, have them stick like they were before. But that's it. There's it is. That's your Garcia Mitchell uh, 622, circa 1970s uh, fishing reel, ready to go until the 2070s. If you keep uh, keep it uh, well maintained, keep it clean, keep it oiled and lubed, and uh, do it on an annual basis, and this reel will last a lifetime. That's how over engineered and how well built it was. So I hope you've enjoyed that. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.